We continue our journey into decision trees. In this video, we will talk about when to stop splitting, how to handle categorical data and missing values, and give implementation details. So we finished the last video talking about how we choose the best split. We measure the information gain for each possible split and then choose the best split, that is the split with the most information gain, and we do the actual split there. But a big question is when do we stop splitting? Well, we could try to go on and on, but eventually we will have to stop. We could stop when the node is pure or when we cannot find a split, for example, if we have two different classes with the exact same features. If we only stop under these criteria, we will call the tree fully grown. Obviously, if we continue splitting until we reach a pure node, we will overfit our data. Our model will be very susceptible to noise and we will get very bad results on the test data. So we need some way to avoid this. There are two main approaches. One is having restrictions during the construction of the tree, and the other is pruning a tree after we grow it to the maximum. For the restrictions, we have several possibilities to choose from. For example, we can set up a maximal depth of a tree. This means that a tree cannot surpass this maximal depth. For example, in this tree, we restrict the depth to be three. So even though we didn't reach all pure nodes, since the tree is already at maximal depth, we won't grow it further. We can also restrict by setting a minimal number of observations required to split. In this example, we set the minimal number to be 10. The green node is not pure, but since it has less than 10 observations, we cannot split it any further, and it ends up being a leaf node. Other possibilities are restricting the minimal information gain. That is, if the information gain of the best split is not substantial enough, we won't split and the node will be a leaf node, setting a minimal number of observation in a leaf node, and setting a maximal number of leaf nodes. This last restriction is a bit more tricky to implement as it requires us to keep track of the state of the entire tree and choose carefully where the next split is going to be. How do we choose these parameters? Most often using validation. That is, we look for the parameter that gives the best test set results. A second option is pruning. In pruning, we first grow a tree to its fullest and then go back and remove some branches from the tree. One popular pruning method is called cost complexity pruning and I will discuss this in a future video. Let's move to categorical variables. What do we do if we have a feature that is not continuous or at least ordinal? The first option is to look at all possible splits. If our X categorical variable has three classes, then we have three possible splits. Either A goes to one side and the rest to the other, B goes to one side, or C goes to one side. Notice that the left-right order doesn't matter. So we will have overall two to the power of L minus one, minus one splits. For L equal four, we have seven splits. In addition to the singular splits, we also have the ability to split by sending two classes to one side and the other two to the other side. Again, left-right order doesn't matter. This option is a bit prohibitive for large L. As L grows, we have more and more splits to consider. So it's not very practical for categorical data with a lot of categories. Another option, which is much simpler, is to do one-hot encoding. In the example given here, we turn the color variable that has three values to a one-hot vector. Doing this is equivalent to considering a split by each class by its own. So we will only have L splits in this case. This is not as expressive as we don't consider all the possible splits. A third option is called target encoding. If we have a regression or a binary categorical response, we replace the X value with the average of the Y for each category. In this example, red has a mean Y of one, yellow has a mean Y of zero, and green has a mean Y of 0 0.5. Surprisingly, it was shown that this is actually equivalent to option one under some conditions. There is also an extension of this to multi-class Y. We first convert the response, the Y, to one hot encoding. And then we create target encoding for each one of these binary variables and replace the categorical X variable with these. Note that in the end, we keep the original Y. Next, let's move to handling missing values. This is a big issue. And actually around half of the card code was dedicated to missing values. Card stands for classification and regression trees. And it's a monograph published in 1984. The type of trees that follow this approach are called card trees, but there are also other implementations. One option is not to handle missing values. 
we can either drop the column with missing values, impute the missing values by giving the mean, median, or mode. And if the x variable with missing values is categorical, we can add NA as its own category, etc. Basically, in all of these approaches, we pre-process the data such that the tree algorithm will get a full and complete data set. If we do handle missing values, then there's two issues to consider. How do we split? And how do we let our data flow, both in fitting or training, and in predicting or testing? For splitting, one option is to penalize a split by the amount of missing values that feature has. For example, if a split has an information gain of 0.1, but the feature considered has 15% missing values, we will give it a final score of 0.085. As for data flow, there are simple approaches. We can choose that missing values always go to the left node, or always to the right. We can choose that it goes randomly to either side, or it can go with the majority of observations, or that it goes randomly with probability equal to the proportion, etc. Another option is to move all the values to both left and right nodes, and then average the final leaf nodes. For example, suppose that for a binary classification, we have a certain observation that reaches four terminal nodes with the following proportions in them. We can average these values and get that overall A is more likely. So we will label it A. For regression, suppose we have an observation reaching the following three leaf nodes. We can take a weighted average where the weights are the inverse of the MSE or MAE. In this example, we do exactly that and make sure to normalize the weights by dividing by their sums. And so we get this. Another option is to use a surrogate splitter. In this approach, we find a column which is most correlated with the current X feature, in the sense that we can find a split that will split the data almost identically to the original split. And so we move the observation with missing value left or right according to the surrogate split. Note that this does not replace the original split. For example, if the node is split by X1 less than or equal to 10, this is still the split for all the observations without missing values. We only use the surrogate split of x2 less than or equal to 8 for observations that don't have x1 values. Finally, let's talk a bit about implementation. We are building trees here, and there are some tree-related issues. One is whether to use recursion or an iterative method. Recursion can be simpler to read, but is not memory efficient. Iterative methods require us to keep a data structure like a stack or a queue. There is also the issue of building the tree depth or breadth first. In depth first, we expand the nodes in a branch until we reach the end. And this is what happens if we use recursion or a stack. Breadth first will expand the tree level-wise. And this is what happens if we use a queue. There is also something called best first, which in every step looks for the next best split doesn't matter if it's in the current branch or current level, but across the entire tree. These kind of splits make sense when we want to constrain the maximal number of leaf nodes. This is also a bit more complex to implement. In the next video, we will actually implement a tree from scratch in Python. See you there.